Good evening. <coughs> uh, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse number 9 for a short meditation. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse number 9. And the word of God says, For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Amen. Amen. Now Paul is writing, and uh, he is writing to the Corinthian church, and he is telling them how uh, great doors have been opened. What is great doors are open means? The size of the doors in the church building? Size of the doors in your house? What is speaking about great doors? And effectual is open unto me. What does that mean? Many doors for worship. What else? Many opportunities to share the gospel. Many people are inviting to preach the gospel. There are people who are unbelievers are showing an interest to know more of God's word. We see them, lots of people, unbelievers are thirsty to know what the truth is. An open door, which means there is an open door to preach the gospel among the unbelievers. Amen? Amen. An open door to go into a particular city to preach the gospel, which means they are willing to listen. They are, they are welcoming us to preach the gospel. They are inviting us to give the gospel to them. Okay? And so that is what is speaking about an open door. And for a great open, uh, for a great door, and effectual is open unto me. Okay, lots of people are willing. The Spirit of God is moving. Souls are thirsty for the truth. They are willing to hear what the truth is. They want to know where they can get an eternal peace. They want to know where they can have the everlasting life. There are lots of people who want to know and so they are welcoming. So that's what Paul is saying. There is a great door and an effectual is open unto me. Amen. Amen. But one thing is, no matter how great door is open, if there is no opposition or adversary, which means there is some problem. Okay, when God is opening doors for you, you know what Satan will do? He will do his level best somehow to discourage you, hinder you, or persecute you, or do something in your life. And he will try to stop you in some way or the other. When God's work is going on, Satan will bring opposition and adversaries in your life. What we read over here is, For a great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. Amen. If we are going to do God's work, then you must understand and you must expect adversaries waiting before you enter there. Or even when you enter into that door. There will be opposition in our soul winning effort. There will be opposition in our preaching of the gospel. There will be opposition in building, uh, bu building uh, lives of people in the scripture. There will be lots of opposition. There will be lots of pain. There will be lots of problems that we, you and I will face if we are going to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. And so it is not a surprising thing. Oh, I got so much. You know, lots of people. What you hear today about missionaries more is exaggerating the problem instead of uh, exalting the Savior and the open doors. Amen? Amen. Oh, I got persecuted. I got these. I got beat. And I got. It's all about how, you know, it's like trying to get sympathy, uh, sim uh, trying to get more sympathy from people. It is not surprising. We go through this always, every day, every week, and every month. Amen? Amen? But we are not going to exaggerate the persecution and the problem that we are facing. We have to thank God and we have to uh, ex exalt the Savior, exalt the, the Lord who is opening doors for us. Amen? Amen. 
The most important thing is not exalting your problems, not exalting your persecution, not exalting you, uh, how you suffer. The most important thing is you must exalt the Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Of course you will face persecution. Of course you will have adversaries. Paul had adversaries in his life. Jesus Christ himself had adversaries in his life. That's why in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, um, you know what he says? Um, Blessed are they who are persecuted for my name's sake. Okay? For, for so they persecuted the prophets before you. And, uh, and then what he says? Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, Matthew chapter 5 verse 11, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Amen. You see, when, when you work for God, persecution will come. When you work for the Lord, adversaries you will face. When you will serve the Lord, opposition will come to hinder you in serving the Lord. But it is not a surprise at all. You have been warned about it. You have been told about it. But you know what? God gives you the power to overcome every adversary. God gives you the power to face the persecution. Amen? You see, when you have persecution, that means you are truly doing God's work. That's why in the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke, Jesus said, Oh, unto you if everyone speak good about you. You know why people will speak good about you all the time? It's because you do not offend them from the preaching of God's word. When you don't offend people, when you, which means you are not preaching the gospel. Because when you are going to preach the truth, people will be offended. Amen. And so you're not supposed to sit around and say, Oh, I'm not going to offend anyone. So I'm going to just give a sugar-coated gospel and a watered-down gospel. It, uh, I don't want to offend the people in the church. Because if I preach the truth, people will stop coming to church. You know, I was thinking yesterday. Uh, it was not yesterday, I guess. Thursday. When we were having a um, college meeting in Brother Freddy's home. And I was climbing the steps and up and up. And uh, how many floors there? Actually, how many floors there are? Four floors? Anybody counted how many steps there are? Nobody, right? How many steps? Okay. Okay, that's just... It takes almost 10 minutes to go up, right? And I was thinking... And I just thought... You know, today people say about... Oh, churches will not grow. Church don't grow. Church don't grow. You don't, you know... This is the time of lavadation church. Yes, that's the truth. But God is not saying, yeah, since this is a lavadation church, you will be like this. God is saying, in the midst of the lavadation church age, you should rise up to be a Philadelphian Bible-believing Christians. Amen. Amen. Which means if you continue to preach from the King James Bible, and preach the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and preach the gospel, and preach repentance, souls will be saved, and, and the uh, Christians will be strong in the world. Amen. Amen. Souls will be saved. The church will grow spiritually and numerically. It is not an excuse. Oh, this is a lavadation church age. So the church will not grow. It is not an excuse. God is telling you, be careful. This is a lavadation church age. So you should not become lukewarm. But rather, I want you to be hot and warm for the Lord. Amen. I want you to be faithful like the Philadelphian church members. I want to be, uh, you to be faithful and strong in the word of God. Amen. Amen. And that is what Jesus is expecting from you and me. And so if you are going forward, and if you are going to preach the gospel, if you are going to share the gospel, and you are going to give gospel track, you are going to preach the truth to the church members. And uncompromising preaching. You will offend someone. Amen. And if you are offending someone, that doesn't mean you are wrong. It, it, it only means you are preaching the truth and the others are sissies. Amen. Amen. Now that doesn't mean you, you, try, you, you offend the people unnecessarily. The Bible also tells us to control our tongues. Amen. In many things we offend people. Unnecessarily, if we just say anything, unnecessarily we are offending. That's wrong. If you are offending people by preaching the truth, God is glorified. Amen. Amen. Continue to preach the truth. And even if you face adversaries, don't be exaggerating your problem. Be like Apostle Paul 
person who is exalting and saying, Great doors are open. Great doors and effectual is open unto me. Amen. He is, he is exalting the opportunity, the preaching of the gospel in spite of these adversaries that he is facing. Every time that you will preach the truth, every time you will go to propagate the gospel, every time you will stand for the truth, persecution, problems, opposition, adversaries, you will face. But the Bible says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Amen. You know what the Bible says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 29? That's my ministry lifelong verse. For unto us it is given not only to believe in His name, but to suffer for His sake. Amen. It is given. Giving means what? It's a gift. Everybody wants a gift. I got spiritual gift. I got that gift. But what about persecution? What about suffering? It is also a gift to keep you humble sometime. It's possible, you see, these days we are having, a lot of people are getting saved. People are coming regularly to church. And new, new people are coming to church. It is possible, in the midst of great encouragement, to even become proud. Right? And so God would just allow something, a thorn in the flesh, to keep us humble. Amen? Amen. We must always remember, keep your feet on the ground. And your head above the sky. Amen? Amen. Be humble and exalt the Savior. In that way you are glorifying the Lord. And you are doing the right thing. So what is what we see in the scripture. As Paul says. There are great doors open. Okay. What is saying exactly. What is that? Okay. For a great door and effectual is opened. Unto me. And there are many adversaries. Great doors and adversaries go hand in hand in the true gospel ministry. Amen. Amen. When you are preaching the truth of the word of God, you will face adversaries. That is not to say, oh God is not in it. God is in it. Amen. Amen. If you have no adversaries, then God is not in it. If you have no problem at all when you are preaching the gospel, no opposition at all, there is some problem with you. That means you are not doing the right work of the gospel. Thank the Lord for the adversaries that we have. Thank the Lord for the great open doors that God, has, God is giving us. Thank the Lord for the opportunity uh, to preach the gospel through various ways. Continue therein. Continue therein. Exalt the Lord. Give your testimony. Tell people how God is opening doors for your life. Okay? Never be ashamed. It's good to exalt the Savior than to exalt ex- adversaries. Amen? You will face adversaries if you are going to do God's work. But that is not a place to turn back. That's where we sing that song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No, turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. But I will still follow the Lord. No turning back. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray?